Hello, Stephen Schaub here, leader of the Fidget Revolution 2.0 here on YouTube. And today is one of the most important videos I will ever make on the Fidget Revolution. Today, I'm gonna to give you a mantra to use uh, when you're photographing with your digital camera or when you're making a scan. So, but first, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you very much. So what is the mantra? The mantra is expose to the right, expand to the left. So what do I mean by that? Well, first off, it's important to understand that digital cameras and scanners are linear devices. That is to say, they have more bit depth, think more tonality in the highlights than they do in the shadows. So this is a reason why if you've ever taken a picture with a digital camera and let's say it's underexposed and you try to lighten it in Photoshop, it ends up looking like well, that's because you don't have the bit depth in the shadows to expand across that entire histogram range and make a good looking file. So expose to the right and expand to the left. What that means is your histogram on your digital cameras or your scans and your scanner should have a histogram that favors the right side or at least sort of a dead center middle. But ideally, you want to expose to get the maximum amount of information on the right side of the histogram, the highlight portion. And then in Photoshop, you would bring that information to the left by using tools like say levels. Um, this is the method that I use for all of my work. And this is also one of the reasons that in the last few posts on stand development and the zone system, all that information about building a low contrast negative with controlled densities, is to favor this particular approach. So if you've got a negative that's lower in contrast and that has controlled densities, and even if it's dense, that scan is gonna be more towards the right, which is good. Because then in Photoshop, when you expand it to the left, you bring out all sorts of amazing tonality and amazing details. But what's really important to remember is not to clip the information to the right. That's the one caveat, is that you don't want to blow out the information. So on your scanner, or on your, even on your digital camera, when you look at that histogram after taking the picture, you want the right side to be as far to the right as humanly possible without clipping. What this means in a lot of cases on a digital camera is that when you look at your LCD after you know, taking a photograph to preview it, you're gonna see that it looks too light. That's good, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with an image that looks a little bright on the LCD, one that's not clipped, because I'm going to expand that information uh, to the left. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a quick diagram here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and then we'll do a conclusion. All right, so here we are. What I've drawn here is assume that this is like a histogram that you see in Photoshop right here and right here. And when I'm talking about a histogram or an exposure that goes to the right, what I'm referring to is one that looks maybe like this or one that looks like this. You can no notice that I'm not clipping on either one of these two, but these histograms are favoring to the right. As a or a histogram like this actually would be fine as well one that's sort of dead center. But ideally, I want to shift this histogram to the right as far as possible through exposure, through development, all sorts of different ways uh, in order to get as much as I can before it clips. What I don't want, let me find a place to write here, what I don't want is a histogram that looks like this. This is going to give you poor results this is gonna give you amazing results. This is gonna give you amazing results. This is gonna give you amazing results. This is not what you want. So let me explain why. So here is a big histogram. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume 8-bit, just to keep the math simple. 8-bit equals 256 shades of gray. That's the way we're gonna think about it. So if so if this is our histogram, this is the highlights, this is the shadows. That means that this first zone, we're gonna just call it zones for the sake of it, right here has 256 shades of potential gray. One stop down has 128. One stop down from that has 64, 32, 16, eight, four, two, one, zero. So what you can see is using this model here and this model here, you're emphasizing more this amount of bit depth. You're emphasizing 32, 64, 128, 256 possible shades of gray in this tonality. So in the exposure, you're doing this. And then in Photoshop, you would be doing this. You're taking all this information and pulling it to the left. So remember the mantra, 
expose to the right, expand to the left. So you can see when you have a histogram like this, which is favoring more of this area, look at how little bit depth that you have. You have a tiny amount of bit depth that you're trying to expand to the right. Whereas having this amount of bit depth over here and expanding to the left really is what you want. So remember the mantra, expose to the right, expand to the left. Um, so here's an experiment you could go do right now. If you have a digital camera, go outside and take a photograph. Take one where you expose to the right as far as you can without clipping, and I'll take the exact same photograph and have the histogram exposed to the left as far as possible without clipping. Now take those two files, open them up in Photoshop, and process it. I guarantee you the one that was to the right and then you expand it to the left is going to look better. But don't believe me, you go try that test right now. But it's important also when you're doing a scan to remember that the nature of everything that I've been talking about here, the way of doing the zone system, the method of doing uh, a stand development, and what you're looking for in that negative, that low contrast negative, the fact that I'm asking you to give a little extra exposure from time to time, depending on the type of metering, you know, doing a zone four as opposed to a zone three for your shadow. But by doing the stand development with that, all we're doing is creating this perfect environment where that histogram in the scan is going to favor to the right. And then when you go into Photoshop, you're going to expand it to the left. I should state that my scans always look too bright. When I do a scan, I don't care what the scan looks like because the scan is just part of my process. You know, it, much like how I don't care if an LCD looks too bright on the back of a digital camera, that's good. That's part of my process. As long as I'm not clipping, I know in Photoshop I'm going to bring that information across and just reap all the benefits of that additional bit depth. Thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film.